This pitch breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins. Well, thank you. Uh, my, my name is Mark Moore. I'm the CEO of Mana Nutrition. We've been here about five years, and when we came to town, we immediately joined Queen City Forward. So we are very happy members of this community and love it. Uh, just as soon as we came in from DC, uh, I moved from DC, other team members moved from uh, Denver, Colorado, from Dallas, and from uh, California. So we all met here in Charlotte because you had a good airport, and we liked the rocking chairs, and it seemed like a nice city. So we built the, um, didn't know anyone at all in Charlotte. In fact, the very first people I met would have been Charles and the Queen City uh, Forward crowd. And uh, we built a factory down in Georgia. So I was working in the United States Senate. I was a fellow there, and I was working on food aid issues, and I learned about this product. It's called Ready to Use Therapeutic Food. Struck me that it would be a good idea for someone to make that in Georgia, though I'd never been to Georgia. So I started driving around in Georgia, and finally uh, we raised some money, about $13 million, and we built a factory down in Georgia. And we now have about 50 employees down there. Year one was a huge uh, step in the wrong direction. We, made about, we did about $500,000 in business and spent about $1.5 million just staying, staying afloat. Uh, but this year, uh, October 1st, we'll close on about $20 million in business. So we've had great years. Uh, we're growing exponentially. We already have orders uh, pushed ahead. If you look at the refugee crisis that's going on right now, this morning, if you drove in listening to NPR, you would have heard of 120,000 people on the move. Those are like biblical proportions of refugees. Uh, and unfortunately, there is going to be a great market for our product. It is um, basically milk, peanut butter. It's a very dense food, uh, and it's got vitamins in it. So it's, uh, it's the frontline intervention against malnutrition. It's used all over the world. So most of our business will come from uh, USAID, uh, from UNICEF, uh, basically those two contracts. We go out, we bid. It's very boring. You show up, you turn in the bids, and you either win or you lose the business. And we tend to win it because we're in the middle of a peanut field in Georgia, and we're... Uh, Pretty, uh, pretty competitive. Now, that's the first part of the story. So this is MANA. Uh, I don't know which one of these buttons actually clicks this, but we're going to try it. There we go. Uh, there's about 180 million kids in the world that suffer from malnutrition. 20 million of them are severely acutely malnourished, and about every day, about 4 million kids a day die, or each year die from SAM, 11,000 kids a day. That's more than AIDS, more than malaria, more than TB, more than all three of those combined times five. It's a huge problem that you don't hear about. And so our product is is targeted at those kids, but it's a very convenient thing and it has a two year shelf life. You can stick it in your pocket. If you're an aid worker and you work for UNICEF or someone like that, it's a very simple way to interact. It's not designed as a, as a replacement. There's all kinds of other programs out there to feed actually hungry people, but it is designed as a strategic tool to keep kids from dying. So uh, that's what we do. And uh, the good news is that there's some hope in that kind of tragic situation. So we got into this idea and hanging out with the Queen City Forward community, we started thinking, okay, as an, we're structured as a nonprofit. So being structured as a nonprofit, uh, that means you basically have one thing to say. Basically 20 minutes of making you feel bad is basically the, what you have to do. You have to go to people and say, hey, for the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna make you feel really bad. I'm gonna give you a little bit of hope, and then I want you to give me money. Uh, we don't have any kind of fundraising strategy. No one works for us who raises money. We don't have any materials. We don't issue press releases. Uh, we don't try to raise money. Uh, that's bad news if you're a nonprofit. So we have to operate like a for-business, a for-profit entity. Uh, but then last year, just from people looking us up, we had about a million dollars in donations, which is great. So you got a $20 million uh, system going. We make maybe about $2 million in profit. We pump it back into the system and grow our working capital. Now, the problem is this. As we sat around and we talked about how can we be different than your average nonprofit, the reality is, is that the entire business uh, world for what we make, this ready-to-use therapeutic food that I would guess most of you have never heard of until you walked in here today, is $160 million. Last year, Americans spent $375 million on Halloween costumes for their pets. So, <laughs> Now, I can make you feel bad about that because actually I do own a Halloween costume for my pet, sadly. Uh, or we could say, hey, who's the genius who started selling these to people and people actually think they need them? So our idea was how can we get into the market and where's something we can go buy? So we started this idea of the calorie cloud. About two years ago, we thought, what if we could harvest calories? What if we could go out and find something that people actually have that they have too many of and they want to get rid of? And we said, why don't you not give us your money but give us your calories? And what if we could propose to them a value proposition that said, we want your calories and we want to save your money, uh, your company money. And so we launched Calorie Cloud. This is our website. You can check it out. Uh, and our idea is we can make your calories cloud. So cloud, we are the only global marketplace in the world for calories. And here's the way we monetize calories. So 
We uh, basically, and this is one of our customers, I'll give you an example of a white label product. We went to UNICEF with this idea and we said, hey UNICEF, how'd you like to do this? And they said, this is a great idea and now they've rolled out what this is called Kid Power. If you go online, you can watch Kid Power videos. Uh, they just this year uh, got a big sponsor, which is, uh, there's the global impact of Kid Power, which so far has produced uh, these little packets, about 117,000. That's active kids in schools where we harvest the calories through sponsors. Now that's all a sponsorship model. And the big sponsor this year is Star Wars. So when it comes out in November, the new Star Wars film has the force. That's all our platform. We have 10 people that work solely on that project. And we're working on our own brand, which is the Calorie Cloud brand. So I have my Calorie Crowd, uh, Cloud uh, band on right now. Basically, you download the app, your corporate wellness program um, pushes them in, and we try to push the calories into the system, and then we say, hey, guess what? We just saved you money on your health insurance. I'll tell you more about it in the question session. But here's the problem of the world today. Half the world is stuffed, and half the world is starved. And our idea is, what if we could just harvest all these unwanted calories on one side of the world and actually push them in a real way to the other side of the world? And that's what we're doing with Calorie Cloud. So, uh, I know it's really clear right now, but we'll hopefully we'll get there in the question session. Uh, great presentation. Um, y y how did you get from 500K of revenue your first year to 20 million in your second year? Were the, was it the USA ID and UNICEF yes, contracts? Yes, huge, huge tenders from them. We started winning their confidence and winning bigger and bigger orders and um, then pumping out more and more products. So, 95% of that is uh, selling the USAID and the UNICEF. How much is each one of those? These are about 30 cents a piece. We make them for about a quarter. So if you know anything about food production, those are ridiculously low margins. So unwise margins, basically, is what we operate on. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Tommy, you were a little long in the presentation. Just a presentation comment about fitting in the format would help a little bit. Um, I've had the benefit of, of watching the company grow up over the last you know, four or five years. I remember when you're here for the DNC, talking to people, I think, in a little booth right over there. Um, uh, so I, it's interesting to see it grow up. I, I remember actually when this kind of idea was born, and the, simple, the, the simplicity of the idea when you first came up with it two years ago was the obesity problem here, starvation problem here. As soon as you say that, people instantly get it. And, and it took it was the very last slide you got, and I'm not sure most of the people remember to get yeah. it simplify this message, right? You live it every day, simplify it, simplify it, simplify it. Starvation here, obesity here, let's fix both. Thank you, Adam, you're right. So how does the calorie cloud work, since you didn't have time to really explain I'm it. glad you asked, I spent too much time on the man aside. Uh, so calorie cloud, here's an example. Walmart this year has uh, 1.2 million employees. Uh, 800,000 of them are obese. So that's a big problem. The CDC says, and they're not worse than any other company, the way I like to rag on Walmart, but they're, they're average. To, the CDC would say that's about $2,000 extra for every employee. So they've got a $1.6 billion annual problem internally at Walmart, and they're very smart people and they know this, so they don't need me to show up and tell them about this. They're working on it, but one of the things they don't believe they can do is actually make a dent in behavior change. You know, these people behave this way and changing them is gonna be tough. What we bring in is to say, uh, what if we stepped into your corporate wellness program and instead of offering people a gift card, which is what probably we all get through our corporate wellness programs, or uh, you know, whatever other kind of carrots we can offer. What if we said, stay active and we will harvest your calories and actually save a life? How valuable is that? So what we found is we offered that value proposition. We did a challenge with J.P. Morgan Chase uh, and it was a huge impact on their motivation. So at the end of the challenge, J.P. Morgan Chase last summer gave us $500,000 off of the cal calorie harvest program for about 90,000 employees. We've done the same thing with Johnson & Johnson. We've done with Pepsi now. Uh, and so we really feel like the low-hanging fruit is for us to go to companies and say, don't give us anything. What we want to do is change behavior in your company. At the end, we'll have the data. We'll roll it up. And if we change behavior in people, then give us a small part of the savings. If, you, if we don't, don't give us anything. So, so to that point, if you have some data on it, that would be incredibly powerful to show. Because that was the question I had two years ago is, because we spend more on our uh, pet Halloween costumes than we do on you know, helping people around the world, does this really motivate people, right? And the proof is in the data. If you have good data, show that. It's really powerful if you have it. I do have some great data. And one, good, good point, and one, one of my best data points is a Stanford researcher named Chris Gardner had this quote. He said, for years we've been telling people, eat more vegetables, and guess what? Nobody ever eats more vegetables. He's one of the world's leading nu nutritionists. And he said, but what if we told people to eat right and it will help someone else, it will produce a huge shift in their behavior. When I saw that quote, I wrote him and I said, Dr. Gardner, I read this quote. I'm curious if this is actually empirically true. And he sent me just a ton of studies saying, yes, this is actually true. 
Uh, and so we're working with Duke and with North Carolina and some others to do some more empirical uh, data studies to see uh, how does this value proposition play out against the gift card and against other, other value propositions in, in corporate wellness. So that's a for-profit calorie cloud. It is a for-profit. It has both, actually. So it's structured down the middle as both. Kind of the foundation side is calorie cloud, and it keeps pushing, uh, pushing money to, uh, to mana. Mm -hmm. The profit from calorie cloud goes to mana. Mm -hmm. uh, gotcha. uh, how many employees do you have pushing the calorie cloud for? At mana, we have 55. At calorie cloud, we have 10 full-time employees. Most of them live overseas. We have three guys in Pakistan. Uh, but they're all full-time for us. We have two in China now, uh, one in Cambodia, two guys in Boulder, Colorado, and one in uh, Costa Mesa, California, and then one here in Charlotte. Those are all, by the way, the budget for them is all paid for by our UNICEF budgets. The UNICEF Kid Power thing is huge. It's sponsored by the NPA. Um, it's, uh, it's amazing for me to click on, you'll see videos online of J.J. Abrams talking about their Force for Good program. All of the backside of that is run by our team. So we really have some private label customers that are impressive. One of the problems was that is I, we have about a million dollars going to their team uh, and really no time to work on our base product, which is the Calorie Cloud product. So we're, we're seeking, uh, I think we got a lot of credibility in that over the last two years. We've done a lot with nothing and we've secured some pretty impressive customers, but we're looking for some others to get behind us to say, hey, we really believe in this, this concept of corporate wellness. So, so that's you, what we think of. So, so, so you ran out of time. What's the ask? What do you want this audience to do? Well, I want, if you have a corporate wellness program going, come talk to me. I think that's the simplest, easiest ask. I think it's, uh, that's low-hanging fruit. Many of us have this, and it's an easy thing to uh, instill in your, in your company. And we've done big companies. We've done small companies. So I, I think we can, uh, if we talk to your HR people, I think we can impress them that we're legit and we can actually pull it off. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Any more? Right. So my son has a peanut allergy. So when I hear that you're pushing a peanut-based product out, would worry me if he was born in Africa instead of the U.S. How are you dealing with that? Well, your son had the disadvantage of being born in America, where you are um, six times more likely, by the way, to be a Republican presidential candidate than you are to get Ebola, just by the stats. But also with peanut allergies, <laughs> something similar to that. Uh, that peanut allergies exist, uh, unfortunately, and are very deadly, uh, could be deadly with your son. Uh, they don't exist in Africa, and there's a lot of theories on that. The leading peanut immunologist, by the way, in the world is at Duke University. His name is Wesley Burks. I spent a lot of time talking to Wesley about it. And peanut allergies just don't exist outside of the United States, and a little bit in Canada. Can Canadians are more paranoid about it than we are, by the way. But uh, uh, it's a bad thing, though. Your son, you know, it's, not, it's a serious thing, so I appreciate the question. Patty? I'm familiar with Palmina, Yes. We are working for the same mission. Uh, I think they're not crazy about us because we are uh, social entrepreneurs, uh, they're for profit. We um, are sitting, as I said, in the middle of the peanut field, pretty low, structured with uh, really, really low um, costs. So uh, they're not crazy about us, but yes, they're, we're, it's like Coke and Pepsi. Except we're more like Jones Soda. I mean, we're really small. And they're, they're the Coca-Cola of this, though. They're, we did 20 million this year, they'll do 230 million of this to many, many agencies outside of the global budgets. They're big. And they're making good, there's good money to be made in this if you're doing it for uh, a profit. Starving kids are unfortunately good customers. One more question. Who's got it? Any more? Once, twice, Alan. You guys won a big competition, I think, a year or two ago in the rain or something. We did. I don't know about, you know, you know we won. We didn't win. We got to the finals. And, uh, but, <laughs> you know, zero. Zero, because we actually never collected on the, uh, on the winners. The, the winner won a million dollars, uh, so we missed out on that one. But, um, but that was like investment money, so I was a little, I'm a little skeptical of, the, of such things these days, because even the guy who won it didn't collect on the million. He had, to invest, he had investors come to him and offer a big chunk of his business, and he was like, no thanks, I don't, I don't, I'm not selling at that rate. So. Uh, but we did get some advice and stuff, but really, Queen City Forward for free has been 10 times as valuable. If you haven't heard of it or if you haven't been involved, uh, I'm a huge fan and a, and a huge, we are a huge benefactor and I think it's kind of the coolest thing going in Charlotte. So when I talk to people about Charlotte, I, I talk about Queen City Forward and uh, very proud members at, at Vanna. So thanks.